so uh, basically um, in these videos I do try to explain uh, certain concepts that are quite difficult to understand without any you know without uh, deep thorough reading and basically to simplify and also you know at the same time try to explain concepts most of the time they're about viruses and bacteria as that's what my interest is in right now so um, and normally I do with little uh, little drawings to make it a little bit simpler but yeah without any further ado uh, based on this book called Achu. It's, uh, most, it's written by, um, uh, a news reporter, but, um, hopefully, um, but mostly, there's a lot of story part of this, but I try cutting it down as much as possible to get just really the information, the real facts about viruses, etc. So, basically, um, we all know everyone you know, we all know the certain symptoms of the cold, everyone's sniffing, everyone's uh, sneezing and coughing. But one thing that scientists have found very interesting is that um, there are a total of 200 uh, different kinds of cold viruses in total. There's about 200. But they all give us the same symptoms. They all give us uh, runny noses, they all give us, like, uh, sneezing, coughing, you know, they all basically make us miserable in the same way. So the question is, if there are different kinds of viruses, um, like, how come with all these different kinds of viruses, how come they keep making us do the same thing? Well, most of the time, um, and also, uh, why do they all cause us to be like this? Now, you have to really get into the point is that are these cold viruses actually, you know, causing all of this? Well, technically, all these symptoms that make us feel horrible have, um, have something to do with this pogo line. It says, we have met the enemy and he is us. Basically a quote from the book that quotes, um, something called a pogo line. I'm not quite sure what that meant. But basically in the sense that uh, understanding the quote basically meaning we are our own enemy. Basically, we are the real cause of all these symptoms. The cold virus is just triggering it. But really, they don't do anything. It's really just us. How, how to explain that? So, basically, what scientists have thought for uh, many years is that when you have a runny nose and you sneeze, all that mucus and extra, you know, phlegm in your throat and, you know, nostrils, is basically what we always thought that they were toxins, either, like, probably produced by the virus, and this was what making us feel horrible, or we just, or, like, what scientists thought was that your nose was just falling apart on the inside. And so, I mean, after all, it does kill cells to make more of themselves. So, like, you could imagine that the inside of your nose, all the green, like, you know, snot and all the phlegm in your mouth, it's just dying cells. That's what everyone has always thought. So, um, a scientist did a study, because they were not quite sure if this is actually true or not. So, um, this, uh, scientist, her name is Winther, basically, uh, she's a, I believe she was a student at, like, um, a university, and, uh, basically her and a, a bunch of her, uh, colleagues went into the nostrils of 56 different people, gave them the cold virus, and then waited until they recovered and checked their noses in between each one. Basically, what they were trying to see is that how much damage does, you know, the cold virus do to your nostrils. Because, you know, remember, they're thinking that, you know, your nose is constantly getting destroyed. But what they figured out is there's actually no damage that happened to it. It's literally the same. There's no sign of destroyed cells, not even when they were constantly sick, not even in between. There's really no difference in the, you know, structure. But what they did figure out is, you know, it's not these cold viruses that really do it, but um, what really do this harm is the flu. But the flu is not, um, the flu is not a rhinovirus. Or, I mean, the flu is not the common cold. It can cause... Well, it causes the flu, it doesn't cause the common cold. But, uh, influenza, that attacks the respiratory system, but itself. And that's probably the closest that they got. But really, the common cold does not, like, physically destroy. It does not rip apart cells 
It does not rip apart ourselves like what we thought. But really, what it's doing is it's like, you know, because it's there, it's triggering processes, turning things on and off that would normally not be there without them. And, uh, yeah. So, quite frankly, uh, qu quite frankly, basically, these are just our reactions of our body being, you know, after noticing that there's a virus there. Really, um, and really the main reason what, why, um, what really does kill these viruses and get rid of them, it's not because, you know, they start slowly deteriorate, but really it's because, you know, we have these things called T-cells. Basically, the virus, the, the human body, after seeing that, the cells, it, um, trigger, triggers signals to these killer T-cells, which kill off the viruses. And they're the ones who get rid of them. Basically, they eat them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they eat them, they engulf them. But, um, yeah, so basically that's what they have to do to, uh, get rid of these viruses. And actually, um, whenever you get the flu shot, really what most of the time is, like, even, they even use this for trying to get rid of smallpox, they, uh, dangle, um, basically they show a dead virus, and the body overreacts because of that in response. And so basically, you can basically make yourself the common cold. You can give yourself the common cold without actually having a virus. You just need to give all the necessary ingredients and causes of it, which we're actually going to get to in about a second. But uh, first, I do want to get to the point about cereals, as it did also mention in the book that I thought was very interesting. Um, sometimes uh, during uh, some like polio uh, epidemic, I believe, um, is it polio? Um, well, anyway, there was, like, uh, during, during one of the epidemics, um, in 2009, when, uh, when there was, like, um, uh, when there was a big epidemic going around of, like, the sickness, basically, they just added more vitamins into their cereals, and, um, basically, they changed, yeah, this was, I ask, basically, they took, they added more of the recommended viruses, uh, vitamins, um, they put more vitamins into, inside their cereal, and basically says, oh, basically on the ads they said, oh, it helps your, uh, helps fend off, um, you know, help support your child's immunity, which really doesn't mean anything, it is not 100% true, because really it's your body that's doing all the work. And it's not, it'd be nice if there was a small thing that would, like, basically give it, but really, it, this really doesn't do anything, to be honest. It just makes your, not really makes your immune system stronger, necessarily, either. It's just, you know, for your body to function, not necessarily immune system. Anyway, so let's get to the certain symptoms. So, sneezing. We all know what this is, but do we know what causes it? No, we pro most likely you don't. Basically, if you see this little guy here, this is the chemical formula for this uh, protein called histamine. Now, uh, histamine is uh, what causes us to sneeze. Basically, whenever... It's basically a reaction that humans have when uh, trying to get rid of the virus from, like, our nostrils. But, like, um, basically, it's like a small reaction. It's like a... Safety trigger to trying to get rid of the viruses that are slowly creeping in more into the body. And, um, what do you, uh, may notice? Uh, we actually do have the same amount of histamine throughout our bodies at all times, whether we're sick or not sick. The difference is, it's just our nose is, you know, more sensitive during this time to the histamine, so when the histamine goes around, you know, that's when we'll sneeze. And, I mean, yeah, so it's just more sensitive in that case so yeah that's basically that for sneezing um now time for uh congestion or the runny nose so basically uh, again like i said before it's not because your nose is ripping from the inside but really what's happening is um there's this little thing called plasma and uh this plasma basically what happens is there are like there's literal, there's, uh, holes, like, in your, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say in your face, but, um, inside your nostrils, that they basically unzip whenever you are sick, Mo typically when you're sick, 
and uh, when you have the common cold. And basically, they unzip just enough for you for the plasma to leak out, but not big enough for red blood cells to go through. Because I mean, that's how you get the running out. That's how you get like a bleeding nose, typically from like heat. Unless you're like obviously picking your nose and you actually scratch it inside. That's a different kind of bloody nose. But um, in this case, um, you can get bloody nose from like too hot or something like that. So. Um, yeah, so basically it unzips just enough, but if it's like too much, that, then red blood cells come out. But um, basically, you can even, now you may be asking, uh, what about when I get a runny nose but I'm not actually sick? Now, a lot of parents, including uh, my own, do um, overreact when I start getting a runny nose. They automatically think I'm getting sick. But actually, apparently this is completely normal based on reading uh, this book. And this is called an induced, um, cold induced right rhinitis i believe that's how you pronounce it but basically what this can happen is uh during exercise when someone's extremely str when someone's uh stressed or eating spicy foods um and this gets uh mul this multiplies even more during cold weather um your body will um your body will give you the runny nose and this really has no purpose whatsoever it's just a byproduct of you know, the actual runny nose that's happening. And again, it's just a way for the um, body, the snot, it's just to catch the viruses that are coming in, really. It doesn't want any more coming in when they're trying to deal with another intruder. But yeah. And uh, just another thing to recognize. Um, the nose is uh, basically your air conditioner for whenever body uh, air goes into the lungs. Basically, it has to settle for two things. It has to settle for, you know, it needs to always be at body temperature. So that's why it also, also why there's mucus there because it's trying to regulate because it has to be body temperature as soon as it gets in. And it needs to be 100% humid. The air that goes inside needs to be 100% humid. And um, fun thing I learned also based on this air conditioning uh, part of the nose is uh, the scientist named Churchill, not Winston Churchill, but uh, the other Churchill, uh, did do some studies that people who live in hot or humid climates basically typically have a flatter nose, and uh, people who live in cold and dry climates have uh, a, a not as, I guess, like more pointy, but I wouldn't want to say that. Not, not as flat, perhaps like taller noses. But um, basically, the point of this is like... Um, you know, these noses are, um, they deal with different kinds of, uh, they're a little bit different when they deal with, uh, the air. So basically, when it's hot and humid, you know, the air, the nose is adapted to that, you know, it's easier for your lungs to, it's easier for your nose to regulate what goes into your lungs. So, like, you know, if you're, tip, if you live in, like, you know, um, let's say near the equator, so let's say you live in, like, Arizona, and then you have to go to, uh, let's say, Russia. Your uh, your lungs are going to be a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be used to uh, the pretty much cold air. But if you're going from Russia and you're going to uh, Arizona, it's going to be really hot. It's going to be pretty hard to breathe, and etc. So, and this is just basically the temperature and the humidity there. So yeah, the yeah just so some examples, and um, getting closer to the end. Um, the cough, it's quite simple, just, uh, just a reaction for your body, and, um, uh, basic, basically, uh, oh, wrong one, uh, basically, the cough is just, a, uh, you know, it's just a safety feature, safety feature, so that, like, you know, maybe if you get, like, water or something that's supposed to go into the air vents of your mouth, you know, so you don't get food accidentally stuck in the lungs, because that's gonna be pretty bad, you only want you don't want any liquid in there too, so it's basically you cough things up. Basically, when you uh, you can cough up viruses too, in case they get into the wrong ports, and you know, uh, typically if they get into the mouth, it's typically not the best solution. Um, it typically is the best solution uh, to like try getting rid of the viruses, but the problem is like, you know, you can also spread pretty easily this way as well. Um, and then just stopped ears is basically. Uh, congestion. It's it's just basically same thing as congestion. It's just congestion, where like you know, 
there's just a lot of mucus or like things blocked up in the tubes of your ears and you can't really deal with it as well through uh through the ears basically what you can do is you know fake chewing or something like that to hopefully you know spread them out of the ears you know going back inside the head so you can like listen more and it's not as blocked up and it's a little bit better and um basically that's that's basically it but just a last note to think about um these sign some scientists did say and this is at, like the end of the chapter that uh there were some people who did not have any symptoms even though they were clearly sick and they clearly were infected with uh the common cold and this brought up the hypothesis and uh pretty much proved with logic um the weaker your immune system is the weaker your responses are so basically these people you know their immune system was just probably weak or yeah probably perhaps their immune system was weak or another possibility is like you know they already dealt with um they they they've already their bodies already dealt with this uh bar so many times that doesn't want to overreact but what was a higher probability is that you know the weaker your immune system is the weaker your responses are and basically this brings up the most ironic part the stronger your body your immune system is the more violent your uh, reaction to the common cold is and uh this is probably the most ironic part to it but yeah that's basically what they said and that's basically for this video i hope you did like it and i will see you next time please tell me anything else you would uh any other vi any infectious agents you want me to do uh i Totally be interested and I totally would search that up. And I probably will make a video about it. Thank you. Goodbye.